Hi, I'm Michael Mann. Oh, you're supposed to say you're Adam Driver. Uh, hi, I'm Adam Driver. I'm Michael Mann, and this is Notes <laughs> on a scene, scene, also known as Michael Says Insightful Things About This Scene. I just nod indiscriminately every <laughs> once in a while. It makes a mockery of you. In the years when our son was ill, when he was dying. How can you say that? Lara, his wife, she has discovered that Enzo has had another child with another woman and basically has a second family. Enzo knows that she knows, and this is the coming together into a scene of conflict and maybe resolution. I find myself sharing my whole life with a woman I have never met. She's in a, in a dim light, only partially lit. Enzo is also in kind of a half light. She rises and he rises and they're about to walk into a very different kind of lighting setup that's very direct, that's gonna illuminate uh, the explosive argument that's about to happen. It makes a mockery of you. We use very direct light coming from a very defined source rather than just kind of general illumination. And that's why there's a highlight on the left side of her face. When he was dying. How can you say that? That boy, is he going to inherit our factory, our name? Because I don't want him to. We have a son. One son, two sons, five sons. I miss Dino any less. Michael is very interested in internal life. So as much as, he, as we're talking about all these things about light and shadow, and, and I feel like that's very well known about how specific he is with the technical aspects of film, I find that he's still chasing a feeling more than something yeah. really specific. And all, all technical parts are really just to enhance the feeling of it. It's all is driven by character. It's all driven by emotion, including what's going on in this scene. The costume design and the palette is fairly monochromatic. It's all brown, there's this brown, and it's, and it's warm because what I really want you to focus on is what's happening right here. But what we're about to find out is the extent to which everything that he tried to do, he failed, he did not. So there's, it's a revelation all in, in anger. The hospital he died in is funded in his name. A school was built in his honor. Honor, who gives a shit? You were supposed to save him! You blame me for his death? Yes! Yes, because you promised me he wouldn't die! Everything! I did everything! Table showing what calories he could eat. What went in, what came out. We all sat around and we did a table read and we kind of talked about it uh, loosely about, you know, what, what's at stake and what is it that we wanted to get out of it. And then I think two days or so before we shot, we oh. were in the room and we worked out blocking, which is another example of, you know, there's a lot of technical things going on, but Michael doesn't tell actors to come in and place them where he wants them to be. We figured it out as, as actors and director of you know, where, where should we start, and, and he's very improvisational that way. And then we came in the next day and we, and we shot it, and we didn't talk a lot about it. That to me is the strength of uh, Michael's movies, is that he trusts cinema to also t tell the story. It's not, to, it, that character is first, which I think again is obvious to you, but that's, that's not obvious to most people, that no one's gonna give a shit if they crash a car if you don't care about the people that are in the car. I know more about nephritis and dystrophy than cars. Yes, I blame you, I blame you, because you let him die. You have a character, it's going to be inhabited by an actor or an actress, and then that is going to become what the real character truly is. I know when I was in a Zoom with Penelope, that's it. She's, no one else could do Lara better than Penelope. And then this guy and I were having a drink in 10 minutes of the conversation. I just knew, we, I sensed the integrity and the artistic commitment. And I had this feeling, this, this is Enzo Ferrari. And that's because you build character from inside out. It's not about physical resemblance. That's all mechanical. You just do that. That's just craft work. It's all, you know, it starts from the, from the inside. The father deluded himself. The great engineer. I will restore my son to health. Swiss doctors, Italian doctors, bullshit. I could not. I did not. Because you were so consoled at Castelvetro, you lost your attention. You had another boy growing stronger while Dino was getting weaker. That's the accusation. Their son, Dino, was dying, and he, she now realizes there was another son 
that was that was that was flourishing. But to me, the moment we've just seen in Adam's performance, it's a moment in a scene that ne it never fails to to rivet me. It is so true and authentic. There is no resolution, and and the if you said to me, what's my action as a director? for how this, what the scene's supposed to deliver to you at the end of the day, it's to maximize the irresolution, the irreconcilability. Everything that was in suspense before is magnified and is amplified and is even more suspense. And I want you to wonder what's going to happen. As opposed to uh, something that uh, says exactly what everybody is feeling all the time. What went in? What came out? I graphed the degrees of albuminuria, the degrees of azotemia. And then there's just a characteristic of Modenese dialect that is more rough and not as polished that we tried to capture. With this, if they're speaking to each other in their native tongue, that they're not making mistakes as much. So that it wasn't, it wasn't watching uh, an, an Italian doing a, an American or a dialect. It was, if they're speaking to each other, then it seems more conversational. It had more of a flow, so to speak. So when we say that a Modernese accident, it's also an attitude, a certain gruff uh, sar sarcasm. Scaglietti, who designed the, uh, one of Ferrari's more famous designers who designed all the race cars, when he was interviewed for Italian television, he spoke in a Modernese dialect that was so thick that they subtitled him in Italian for the rest of him. <laughs> so it's that, it's that heavy duty. What goes on in your mind? He got sick, dystrophy, kidneys. It destroyed him. It destroyed us. What do you care? Huh? You have another son, you have another wife. She's not my wife, but he is my son. Move out. There's a, a primitive, irrational belief that she holds 100%, that he's responsible for the death of, of Dino because of his inattentiveness, because some of his attention was on, which is complete nonsense, but some of his attention is on the other wife, the other son. And then the scene does end here with that irreconcilability, the irresolution. Move out. The reason I didn't give up on trying to make Ferrari is I would open up that screenplay, start to read it. By page two, I was hearing the voices and seeing the people, and it's all due to the, again, the emotional power of these lives, and the and because they, they encompass the kind of dualities that exist in our lives. Uh, things resolve neatly in door A or door B, or conflict resolved neatly in fiction, the kind of fiction that we do making, making movies. What's wonderful about this story is the story resolves, the people don't. The complexity and the duality of Enzo between the engineer mentality and somebody who's very passionate, the libidinous, you know, as much at the end as it is at the beginning. And that's the way our lives really work. And so to be able to have a drama that's dramatically powerful and resolved, but nevertheless, characters who were so alive, um, that's, you know, that's what kept me in it.